I'm Sue. And I'm Julia. And welcome to the second episode of Sticks and Stones. Today we'll show you what we've been working on since our last episode and you'll even learn how to make a pair of beaded earrings. Alright, so what have we been working on? Last time that we got together, uh, you talked about knitting. And so I went out and I bought needles. I bought yarn. Really? <laughs> and I made these. Are you serious? What do you think? Look oh. at this one. Look at the design on this one. Yeah, except for the fact that this is crochet. I would totally believe you. <laughs> I didn't make them when I bought it. I thought I was, I, I was going to see if I could trick you. I, I would totally have believed you except that this is the wrong. Look at the design on this one. Like, it's, yeah, like I could go out and... This is for all the people who think I'm I'm gonna knit. <laughs> yeah, she did great. So you look, I didn't even drop a stitch. No, I really did them. not make me. <laughs> my mom made them. <laughs> all right, you want to see what I really made? I would love to see what you really made. <laughs> I really made this, and this is a bag. Well, it's not quite tacked down yet, but this is a bag I've been working on. It's been an idea for a very long time, and so these are actually boots that my daughter wore, and they were hand me down. And she wore them to death, and that I couldn't pass them on. The, I think those are so cool. The the <laughs> toes of the boots were really, really worn out, mm -hmm. and so and she just loved them so much. So I decided to make her this tote bag, and so this is part of the boots here, and then this is as well. And so um, yeah, she likes That's horses, neat. and then I lined it, and you could really actually turn it inside out if you want. And so the boots are. Pockets. I thought so. That that's really neat. That that will these be pockets then too, or just? Uh, they're gonna flats. be just designs. My yeah, uh, cool. sewing machine was kind of not happy with four layers of fabric plus leather, and yeah. so it took a day off, and uh, so um, I'm gonna have to finish tacking this on. But she really liked it. So that's I just I can't say enough about this. <laughs> well, it's really you. cool. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, yeah. See, it's, I'm inspired. <laughs> it's been an idea for a very long time. So. Yeah, the back is just plain. So um, I originally wanted to make the boots the bag, um, and then it just wasn't happening. So I ended up making them pockets, which if I had thought of that first, it would have taken a lot less time. <laughs> so, That's great. I'm, oh, I'm very, very impressed. Yeah. And what else has been going on this week? It's, it's been a classy week for me. I've been teaching classes. I was taking classes. And this week I taught this little beadling class. Uh, for a group of homeschoolers. This is a little fish that we made. Oh, cool. And yeah, they're called beadlings. You can get patterns online. Um, or there's a book. This is the little bumblebee um, that I've made before. And this one is the... This is a gecko. But these are a fun craft to do with kids yeah. because you know, you're just weaving this stuff back and forth through the pony beads. You just have to make sure the pony beads are big enough to get it through. But the class was actually a class about oceans. That's what they were learning okay. about. And so they made the little beaded fish. That's so fun. Yeah, they are. And I also took a class, but I'll talk about that later. All right. What have you been working on? Oh gosh, I have been very, very, very busy these past two weeks. I honestly didn't think I would have much to show, but apparently I do. So um, this is the easy project that, that I made this week. It's the Afghan square. Um, I'm going to guess that the person who's going to be getting it is not watching this, <laughs> I'm going to guess, but um, without using names, a person I know, um, her father's very sick, and so a bunch of people in the group that I'm on have gotten together to make squares for an Afghan, and then we're all going to um, pitch in um, and ship them to one person, and she will connect them all and then send them to this girl, so she has like, it's kind of like a prayer shawl or a, a comfort Afghan, and we were all supposed to do a 12 by 12 square in whatever design we chose. Oh, that's pretty so, neat. So this is mine, and I may do, I may embellish it. I don't know yet. I'm not sure. When I look at it, though, this is the most fun. Look deeply into the square. <laughs> it may not work on film, but if you look closely at it, it makes, it your, makes eyes your eyes go, go woo. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that was my easy, easy project. Maybe you should keep that at home for the yeah. kids. Look into you the are square. hypnotized. Um, and I did a test knit for a girl um, on Ravelry. I'm, I'm in a little group that you can volunteer to do test notes for free. So I made this little sweater. Um, That's so cute. It's called Edith. And I'll post a link. Um, it's just a zero to three month baby sweater. I thought the ruffles on it were about the cutest thing ever. And since I know 11 babies born so far this year and oh another goodness. four or five to come by the end of summer, 
somebody will be getting this little sweater That's as, so a, cute. as a baby gift. Yeah, so I really like that. Um, and then adorable. this is the grand unveiling. Um, I had t I meant to tell you guys last week, <laughs> last time, about a project I've been working on for my daughter's birthday, but um, first of all, we didn't push record for that <laughs> segment, so you didn't get to see it. But this week we did. This week we did, let's hope. <laughs> this week we did. Second of all, for whatever reason, the pattern and I were not getting along. Um, I would cast on, and I would start, and it just, every time it just looked... I don't know, it wasn't working for me. So I ripped it all out two weeks ago, started from scratch, and have successfully, I think, made spring garden tea. Um, it's gonna be hard to see the whole thing because she's getting pretty big. But she wanted um, embellishments, so I put buttons around the bottom, and there's little pearls in the lace and the sleeves. And uh, this is her eighth birthday present. Wow. My kids get a sweater of their somewhat choosing. They don't know the final outcome. Um, but they get to choose the yarn and they get to choose the basic pattern um, for each of their birthdays. So, oh, that's nice. So I'm encouraging them as they get bigger <laughs> to pick boleros, hats. Because <laughs> it's too much to make. Yeah, it, it, well, they start to get almost as tall as me. Yeah, I mean, this yeah. could, it wouldn't fit me, but. Wow. She's getting pretty big. So it finally came together. And it it sounds like you did it really quickly. Yeah, I, I am surprised. It took me less than two weeks to do this. Um, so I, I will again post the link to this, um, to this pattern. Um, the girl who writes it, her name is, um, Alana Dacos and she goes by Never Not Knitting is her, <laughs> her moniker. And, um, she's got some beautiful patterns. I've made a couple of things by her and, and they're just really quick and fun and they turn out really nice. So. Yeah, I like the, I like the little sleeves on this. I think the sleeves are really cute. Yeah, a little lacy. And she yeah. insisted she wanted ocean color. Which nice. is a big change from my girly girl pink child. Oh, it's starting. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Pretty soon it'll be black. <sighs> <laughs> We're not going there. <laughs> and then the last thing I wanted to show you guys, this isn't really a new project. I made it a couple months ago, but it's a new pattern for me. I, um, I wrote up and released on Ravelry this pattern from my flip topper mittens for children. And they're kind of fun. My, my other daughter asked me to make her a pair of mittens that she could take the, the fingers off. So that's what these are, and they come with a little button on the back here. Um, so you can connect it down when they want to do the fingerless mittens. Or um, if it's cold, they can just pull it back up over their tips. Nice. Um, and so this is um, it's for sale on Ravelry for, I think, a very cheap price. I believe I priced it at $2. That is a really good um, price for a pattern. So, and they're kind of fun, they're quick, uh, and they work for small elementary school age. So, so is it one size, or, or is there different sizes? There is one size, but it's very easily modifiable if somebody wanted to try. Okay. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy. So, they're called Flip Toppers, Flip Toppers Children's Mitts. I like the little ladybug bee. Thank you. Yeah, she wanted ladybugs, she wanted red, so that's what she got. Nice. So. That's what I've been working on this week. Fun. Every now and again, it's fun to show you some stuff that just makes us smile and things that maybe we are inspired by. So here's what we've got for you this week. I just got these in the mail. I ordered them a month ago. It was a birthday present to myself. And they're coasters. I know it's pretty simple. They're coasters, but <laughs> I think they're so cute. They're yeah. by AD Knits. I got them off of Etsy, and she felted the coaster and then put... Um, felted some Queen Anne's lace on it and I had a friend give me some snowflake coasters for Christmas that were from I think William Sonoma these really thick mm -hmm. felt coasters but I just love them and every day when I put my coffee on them I'd be like oh look at the snowflakes <laughs> and then I you know it became spring really early right. and I kept thinking all right enough with the snowflakes I need something new so I found these and I love these them they're so cute they're really fun in fact I don't even really want to put anything on them <laughs> But I will. <laughs> yeah, they're really cute. Yeah. I love them. I could see doing something so. like this. Yeah. And you said these are needle felted, right? Yeah, I th I'm pretty sure she needle felted the uh, the flower part on them. Um, but the rest of it was was uh, she needed it and then felted it Neat. in the washing machine. And the other thing that I did this week was I took a class. I took an online class through Craftcast, and Craftcast is a podcast I listen to. 
and uh, it's done by Allison Lee, and she does all these master classes on the line. So I was learning how to solder, and it was pretty neat. Um, they they showed us a project to make a twisted bracelet that we can make, and um, it was just neat because soldering mm -hmm. is one of those things that you really need to practice, and it's hard to kind of get it without seeing when the metal melts and the thing oh, the gosh. pieces come together. It, it's uh, it's tough I until you get the hang of it. I can see fire. <laughs> it's a lot of fun though. Yeah, it's, that's a ton neat. of fun. So uh, that was what I did Wednesday night. Is right. and you just register for the class online. It was I think forty five dollars, and then after the class, I get a copy of the uh, of the class, so I can download it onto iTunes on my phone or on my computer, and then I can look at it anytime I want. Craftcast. Craftcast.com. Okay. I've yep. heard of Craft Z, but not Craftcast. Yes. That's neat. Yes, that sounds good. Yeah, she does. She does a lot of classes that have to do with metalsmithing and polymer clay, but she does also occasionally offers other classes as well. Neat. Yeah. I mean, okay. for forty-five dollars, not having to go anywhere. I was eating ice cream while I was watching it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good class. That's a good class. Well, um, my other exciting thing this week was I, I've been part of a couple of swaps lately through the Nerdy Swaps group. <laughs> Everything's on Ravelry, and yes, I am a nerd. <laughs> By default, it's all my husband's fault for being a computer guy. But the fun thing about it is that every two months there's a new theme, um, and so this, this time around it was Mathematics, Geometry, and Illusions. So you can see where the nerdiness comes in there. Um, but I got a really cool bag. This is really fun. It's like a little pouch and it has uh, shadowy cubes on it. I'll have to definitely do a close-up of this, but it's just real fun and real simple and the colors are great. It's really cute. It's got a neat little spiral on the bottom. I love that. Um, I could knit that in a second. You could. <laughs> you could. I am going to get you here one of these days. I didn't I say I was never going to knit. I just wasn't knitting this week. <laughs> <laughs> For like two seconds. Uh, yeah. yeah, you did. So you realized I had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> but this is cool. This girl, um, Audrey, is in, is in Oregon, so I shipped my stuff out to her, and she shipped hers to me. And so that's what I got there. And then I have to just show you. Not only did she indulge my other crafty side by giving me some really cool <laughs> cardstock paper and a bunch of stickers. So I can make something fun with that, but she gave me this beautiful skein of Malabrigo really lace. Pretty. I have got to figure out how to make this tonal, the color, the dyeing is just amazing. So, um, so thank you, Audrey. This is wonderful, and I am truly inspired to go find something really springy to go make out of that. And of course, she gave me candy. <laughs> And what did you send candy. her? I sent her the two dishcloths that I showed last time. Oh, right. Um, they were mathematically based, and then I sent her a skein of bear yarn that she can dye herself, and um, a dove bar, and some little knickknacks. A dove, like the dove you eat dove chocolate. <laughs> dove no, no, no. <laughs> okay. No, the <laughs> chocolate dove bar, not the soap. Um, <laughs> Train of thought. Okay. Shoom. No. <laughs> so in every swap, you send something you made, and then something to eat. Yep. And and some then yarn. some crafting. Yep. Swaps. Something something crafty and yeah. some yarn. So. Yeah. All right, that clears it up. It's really no cool. no personal hygiene <laughs> products. <laughs> you could if you made so maybe that would be okay, but no, I would not send a bar so through the mail. So. So this week I started a new project. Um, again, by the same girl, Alana Dacos, who does Never Not Knitting. Um, this is going to be the Playful Stripes cardigan, and I don't have very much done, so hopefully you guys will see more um, when we come back next time. But uh, I've had a lot of, like I said, a lot of babies being born, so this is, this is one of the presents for one of the new babies, um, little Zoe, and it's going to be a Pico Edge um, little cardigan with a, a yoke. And these are the colors I'm using for the yoke. I'm going to do real brights, a nice um, melon, a green, a bright yellow, and then I'll tone it down with a brown. Ooh, that's going to so, be fun. Yeah, I think it'll be kind of springy and fun and sunny and uh, something that a little girl needs. Plus, I'm going to make it big, so uh, she probably won't wear it till she's six months old, I guess, for the fall. Um, but this is my next little project, and uh, <laughs> I love these colors. <laughs> They just make me smile. You yeah, know? they're fun. They're fun. They're so, fun and they're baby. So this is my big thing to finish in the next couple of weeks. Fun. 
And today I made these earrings. I was pulling together uh, the supplies for the DIY section that we're doing today and so I made these cute little earrings. Um, and we're not going to do something quite this complex today, but uh, in just a minute you'll learn how to make some beaded earrings. If you're going to do some basic beading, you need a few tools to get started. The first is chain nose pliers. These are two different pliers that I have here. This is a German made pair of pliers made by Lindstrom. This is a pair that I bought at Michael's many, many moons ago. Um, I love these pliers. They're really sturdy. They're showing a little bit of wear and dirt on them, but they, they work really well. And they have this little spring in here, so they always spring open. Um, these German pliers, they're a lot more expensive, and I like them as well. And you can take this piece out to change how much they spring back. And you can shake it out so they don't spring back at all, or you can change how wide they open. Um, you can see this pair actually has little teeth along it, and that's why I have tape on it, so that when I clamp onto something, it doesn't make marks in the metal. But I love both of these pliers. So one pair of uh, chain nose pliers will help you get started. In addition to the chain nose pliers, you need round nose pliers. And round nose pliers have a conical shape on them, and that way you can wrap metal around them. These also are from Michaels, have the little spring in the middle, so they spring back open when you let go. This is also a German pair, and these do not spring back open. Um, both of them, great pair of pliers. In addition, you need a set of wire cutters. These are two different types of wire cutters. This is a pair that will cut in this direction, right on the edge there, and this pair cuts this way. And depending on how you use these, you get kind of a tapered end. Either one of these is fine. You need really just one of each. So you need a cutter, a round nose pliers, and a chain nose pliers to get started. One other tool that is helpful but not essential is a bead scoop. If you have a lot of beads in your bead bucket, um, this you can use them to grab them with the tweezer end or scoop them up with a scoop end. Again, it's not essential, but I don't know how I lived without this tool before I had it. <laughs> Once you get all your tools set, the next thing you need is some wire to get yourself going. You need some head pins or some eye pins. A head pin looks like a straight pin that you use for sewing. There's a flat end on one end, but instead of there being a point on the other end, it is flat. And so you can just string the beads right on there, like that. If the bead hole is too big, it will fall off. And that's why you need to put a little bead on first. And then the big bead. Uh, you can get them in just the straight <clears throat> end, or you can get them with fancy ends like these. In addition, there's eye pins, and that's because there's a little hole or eye at the end. You use eye pins to add movement to your jewelry. You can see in these earrings, which are the ones that I showed you today that I made this morning, um, there's an eye pin here, and then there's also one on this bottom bead, so when you pick them up, they all move a lot. And so eye pins will give you movement. To make a basic pair of earrings, you're going to slide the beads onto the head pin. And then you're going to use your round nose pliers, these are the ones with the conical top, to make the loop. And all you do is grab the wire about a quarter of an inch above your beads and slowly turn the pliers back towards the beads until you make a loop. Now you'll see our loop is one a little off center and the wire is too big. So we're going to use our flat nose pliers to straighten it out. I'm going to use my round nose pliers to bring it back so we have a little stem there. And I'm going to use the cutter to cut off the excess wire. Just be careful when you do it. You might want to hold on to it because it flies. And then we can use our pliers to straighten out our loop. Oop, I need to cut off a little bit more. and bring our loop in. 
If it doesn't come all the way in, you can use your G nose pliers to cinch it. Now we want to add our ear wire, which is this, and it already has a loop on it. Whenever you open loops, whether it's on a jump ring or an earring wire or an eye pin, you never want to just crank them apart because you'll never get them back. Instead, you twist them to the side like that to open them. Then you can slide the other loop onto this and twist them back. And that way they'll be pretty solid there. And there you go. You have an earring. With this basic technique, using a pliers to turn the wire and make a loop, you can make any of these earrings right here. You just need to string the beads and make the loop. You can connect two loops using the technique I showed you of opening the loop to the side, and you can make a connection of as many as you want. Okay, so here, do I want to clip it first or, or turn it first? I like to turn it just in case you misjudge on how far away you need to be. And as you'll see with the conical pliers, that um, they get bigger at the ends. So if you grab them closer to where the pliers close, you're going to have a bigger loop. If you grab them down at the very end, you're going to have a smaller loop. So is that too big of a loop? No, because you can make the loop a design element. So you can make it as big or as small as you want. You just want to kind of keep in mind where on the pliers you grab those so that when you do the second earring, it's at a similar spot. Okay, and it doesn't matter that the wire twists as you're, it doesn't need to be flush up against the beads? No, it doesn't have to be. Okay. Again, it's your earring, you can make it the way you want. When people ask you, you say, it's art. It's art. And the other thing I like to remind people, a lot of times when I'm teaching making earrings, you're working so close to them yeah. that you keep thinking, oh my gosh, they're not exactly the same, but when you wear them, they're on either side of your head. Ah, that's true. So they don't have to be exact. And I always tell people, tell people that if somebody is that closely looking at your earrings, they probably should be kissing you. <laughs> Look at that, you made an earring! So does it, is, does it matter if the circle is not centered? You, in order to center it, what you can do is you can take your round nose pliers and stick it inside there and adjust it back and okay. forth to make it be in the center. And okay. then if it gets wonky this way, you can take your flat nose pliers and just smush it to make it straight. Okay. And so now this one I twist to the side, and I pop that on there. You got it. All right. And twist it back. Twist it back. Yep. You, need you call these conical and... No, those are chain nose pliers. These are chain nose. Those they, are conical, I'm sorry. Yeah, they're the round nose pliers. Chain nose or flat nose? Yep. That's an interchangeable term? Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, technically you could use... People call them different things. You can get this kind of pliers at the hardware store. Okay. You know, that you use to just fix your sink. Okay. Um, but a lot of times they're a lot bigger than this. So you could, if you didn't have pliers and you wanted to make this down, you could look in your toolbox and see, but usually they're a lot bigger than this, okay. so it's hard to get into those little spaces. Now, I've also seen some, I think, that have like the, the wire cutters in here. Are mm -hmm. those not recommended? No, you can use those. There's actually a wire cutter right here. Oh, all right. I just like this wire cutter better okay. um, because these sometimes you have to wiggle it back and forth because you can see there's a space in there. And so yes. it doesn't get as clean of a cut as a wire cutter. All right. Okay, now I'm, I just noticed I put these down and my beads are going up inside the loop. Does that mean I have to make my loop smaller? Yep. Okay. Ooh, this is tricky. No, 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 I don't think it's as tricky as knitting. See, because the good thing about earrings is like, if you, they don't turn out exactly the way you want, you just have a different pair. <laughs> With knitting, if it doesn't turn out the way you want, you know, like now you have three arms on your sweater. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would hope. <laughs> so I've heard some funny things. Actually, I have I have two projects right now that I made that are pretty significant projects. One was a skirt, and the other was a long sleeve cardigan. And I've already ripped the skirt out, and I'm about to rip the cardigan out. And it's been done for a year, but I'm not wearing them. So rather than rather than waste the yarn, I'm going to take two months of work apart and start fresh. Yeah, that's a great thing about earrings. Yeah. 20 minutes, you can make yeah. a pair, you don't like them, pass them on to someone else. That's true, that's a, a lot less work. I don't know, I, I enjoy this, but I, how do you, how do you get your inspiration for your colors? Like, where do you, do you get it from a book, or is there, is it just stuff you see? Um, 
just stuff I see or, you know, just dump a bunch of beads in a bead box. A lot of times they're sold as sets, like it'll all be an all green set or an okay. all blue set. Um, like these, these came together as a set. It was like a pinkish white set. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times I just pull it together. But I've heard a lot of things about like if you see plants you like, and you like them because of the colors, like say like lilacs have a light purple and maybe a white in it and okay. then a light green, mm -hmm. that's a great place for to start with your palette and right. look at plants and that's see what idea. colors are, are involved. I've lost my ear wire. Well, I'm sure we'll get you another one. Oh, it's attached to your <laughs> earring. How about that? Well, I, um, I guess on this note, I'm pretty excited. This, this was really actually very simple and I was able to put together a pretty decent pair of, of earrings in a matter of seconds. And now so, your birthday shopping's done. It is. This will this will go to the daughter too. So. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you, and we'll see you next week on Sticks and Stones. Bye. <laughs>